If you want great sound, it's crucial to EQ your room. It comes with three main benefits. First, you practically eliminate feedback issues. Second, channel EQ becomes really simple if you even need it. And third, your live stream mix sounds better because you're not putting unnecessary EQ on individual channels. EQing your room is putting EQ on your main mix so that your overall mix is shaped to fit your room. You see, each room has its own response to sound. It reverberates certain frequencies more than others. This will level the playing field. It'll take time to EQ your room, especially if you haven't done it before. So set aside at least four hours with just you and the wing. You'll really get to know each other. You'll need to buy yourself a reference mic. I use the DBX RTA measurement microphone. Get the best deal from Sweetwater and support our channel in the process using the link in the description. You can't do this with just any mic. You have to have a measurement mic because they are the only type of mic with a flat frequency response. Now let me take you step by step on EQing your room. You'll probably have questions as you're doing this. Get them answered quickly by joining my inner circle. This will give you access to one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and my private chat group amongst other benefits. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, step one, level your main mix EQ. We will be using your main mix EQ to EQ the room. So if you already have EQ parameters on your main mix, just reset all of them. Step two, set up the wings oscillator. In order to EQ your room, you need to play pink noise through your sound system using the Wings Oscillator. So find an open channel, turn the fader all the way down, and then select it. Head to the channel routing screen and tap the unlock button. Change the source group to oscillator and tap OSC1. Next, head to the sources screen and change the oscillator type to pink and adjust the level to negative 18 dB. Now, before we head to step three, you should know I put all of this information in a cheat sheet so you can print it off and set it next to your mixer as you're doing this. Download it for free using the link in the description. All right, step three, set up the reference mic. Place your mic in the middle of your room facing towards the speakers at ear level. And make sure the mic is tilted at the same angle as your speakers. Connect this mic to an open input on the wing. Route this input to an open channel. Activate phantom power. Make sure compression, gating, and EQ are all deactivated. And now turn up the oscillator channel until it's about the same loudness as a normal worship service at your church. Select the reference mic and head to the input screen and set the gain so that it's hitting those first couple of yellow lights. Are you looking for the quickest way to master everything on the Behringer wing? Check out my course, Wing Mastery, using the link in the description. Step four, EQ your room. With pink noise playing, open up the EQ for your reference microphone. You gotta make sure that the RTA is enabled, so tap the settings button, turn RTA auto gain on, set the size mode to OVL for overlay, tap close. Now you can see what the reference microphone is hearing. You want to look for frequencies that are significantly above the rest. This is what's sticking out in your room. And now you can apply EQ on your main mix to fix the problem areas. You'll make an EQ adjustment on your main mix and then come back to your reference mic to see how things changed and so on. Every room is different, so there's no way for me to predict how this will turn out for you, but I can give you a few general guidelines. First, focus on areas where frequencies need to be cut. When EQing a room, boosting frequencies is usually not the right strategy. Next, use PEQ filters only because generally you're not gonna use high cut, low cut, or shelving filters when you're EQing a room. And when it comes to that Q value, start around four and then adjust to fine tune. You may need to find out that you need to make it more narrow so it's not affecting those neighboring frequencies as much, or you may need to widen it out to get the desired result. And keep in mind, you most likely won't need to make huge adjustments when EQing the room. So if you're cutting more than six dB, you may be a little too aggressive, but hey, some rooms do require bigger cuts, so don't be afraid to use them if you need them. And this one's important. Don't obsess over perfection. You're simply looking to fix frequency ranges that are significantly out of line. Once you feel like you've solved the major EQ problems in your room, play your favorite song through the sound system and toggle that main mix EQ on and off to hear the difference. If this is your first time, it probably won't sound as good as you want it to. Simply level out that main mix EQ and do the whole thing over again. Do it as many times as it takes. You'll probably have some questions. You can get them answered quickly by joining my inner circle. This will give you access to one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and my private chat group amongst other benefits. I'll leave a link in the description.